Thank you so much for joining us today, Anthony, and I'm really glad we got to see the keeping and get a little recording of it and got to work with you on this project. Um, first, I'm going to ask a few questions. For those of you at home, you all know it's the standard three so far. We might add another one in there just to mix things up. Um, but first, I'll start with a question which is, you know, rooted in this whole Radical Future series uh, moving forward. As an artist whose artistic expression is deeply rooted in your practice, would you be able to speak on how practice affects art making and like vice versa, right? It's interesting because I don't see the difference between practice and art making. Um, I think practice is what you do. Ritual is what you do. And so, um, yeah, there's not really a difference. If I'm not practicing, I'm not making art. Yeah. Um, but I will say this to, you know, kind of delve in deeper. I think there are certain practices that make art um, making more available mm. to me. Mm -hmm. And I am speaking about this on the hills. It hasn't even been 24 hours since we wrapped um, our public sharing of the keeping last mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. And there's some things that really stand out that are practices that informed how I moved through making that work in community with community over the last three years. Yeah. And I'll say they are, you know, today I can say that some of the practices include vulnerability, mm. um, honesty, mm -hmm. um, having the capacity to have your ego checked, having mm. the capacity to have my ego checked, um, listening more than speaking quite often, um, allowing people to, well, not really allowing, um, holding space for people to reveal themselves to themselves. Mm. without absorbing whatever the energy is around that unfolding and unveiling. Mm. Um, I think there has to be a practice around joy and um, and what that means because that, you know, there, there's a lot of talk about that. Mm -hmm. In today's, you know, times, Black people are increasingly talking about joy amongst other things, but talking about joy and I have to say that you know there's a lot that gets in the way of joy there is a lot that gets in the way of the practice of joy and I feel very deeply that um joy is such a personal journey you know what it looks like for one person uh, absolutely is not the same for the mm -hmm. another person and so I am increasingly finding that, you know, as people are part of my work or the work that I am stewarding, yeah. um, that wherever they are on that joy spectrum has a, an immense impact mm. on how they show up in the work. There is something about, you know, I have to talk about this economics mm. and money and really the transparency around that. I mm -hmm. live in New York City, I make work in New York City, and the economic realities of having people be able to focus in mm -hmm. and really take care of the work, the art that that um, that is being stewarded, you know, people sometimes can't agree to things that they really shouldn't agree to mm -hmm. because they don't have the time for it. And so, the practice around that is 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 more than honesty, but it is very much about self evaluation. Can you really do the thing that you say you can do, mm -hmm. and how present can you be mm -hmm. in your body, in your spirit, in your mind, in your own practice? Because because the work that I create um, and steward is so rooted in the practice of ensemble, mm -hmm. as opposed to any other notion or hierarchy of who's more important than the other person, you know, the ensemble mm -hmm. um, cannot thrive. Yep. If a lot of what, you know, all of these practices are not attended to. Mm -hmm. 
And so, you know. So it's also figuring out how to make time for them, it sounds like, too. I mean, time, but, but really, it's more than time. Yeah. It's really about emotional and spiritual capacity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of us, many of us are trained as artists to gig, to mm -hmm. not get emotionally involved, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I signed a contract to do this service. I don't sign a contract for you to be all up in my business, mm -hmm. for you to even care about how I am, you know, facilitating in space mm -hmm. or the lack thereof. And and increasingly, I don't want to work with people who are not available to themselves and therefore cannot be available to the process they've signed on a dotted line for. And mm -hmm. I'm getting more vocal about that. Yes, um, yes. Yeah, because, you know, it is spiritual work yeah. for me. It's not that I am trying to in, induct or invite or initiate everyone into doing this kind of work. Mm. But if you are coming to this space, then to do mm. the work that I'm offering you to do, mm -hmm. uh, it's not a gig. And you know, and I know that there are hierarchies. Yeah. These people get paid this much, these people get paid that much. And in an ensemble, we share the work and we share the resources. Now that does get a little sticky, I have to say, T, because mm -hmm. ultimately I'm the executive producer of these things that I invite people to and I'm responsible for paying people. Mm -hmm. Up to a point, right? Mm -hmm. but the sharing of responsibility around emotional, showing up emotionally and spiritually is something that I think is challenging, but these things are all intertwined. The yeah. art, the practice, they're the same thing and they affect and impact each other. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, one of the things that you spoke towards in that that I really value is this layer of embodiment and what it means to be embodied as a whole artist, like administratively in control of yourself and knowing how your body, knowing your time, knowing your amount of presence you can give, right? And also artistically. And so yeah. I feel like these three episodes like really explore, right, artistic expression at the intersection of ritual. And a ritual for myself to do that is I know I have to commit myself to meditation. And if I don't commit myself to meditation, like even so much, I cannot show up fully in my work in my work in producing and knowing how to handle a conversation between an artist, between uh, two artists together, et cetera, right? And so also knowing your time, right? <laughs> and being like, I can commit to this, but I don't know if I can commit to that, right? So I'm curious for you, right? Like meditation is one of my rituals to artistic expression. What is a ritual that you have that leads you towards artistic expression or that you've even found in the pattern of doing your work? You know, it's interesting. Meditation can happen in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Um, I find being with my friends unagended and not talking about or doing work is a ritual that increasingly is important to me. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes silence, I need that, but that is for rest, you know? But really I'm increasingly, like the authentic, holistic relationships, going to play, you know, cards and going to a cookout. These kind of secular rituals are have always been important to me, but increasingly that's the way I I find my folks to do mm. creative work with. We don't have to be best buddies. We don't have to be friends, but it is in a social space where you see people, yeah. you see people's integrity. And oftentimes people show up. If you, if you do this multiple times, the avatar will melt away and you can see the, even if you, even if it's challenging work that you end up doing with that person, you can see their hearts, you know? Yep, yep, yep. Um, And when we are all on the stage acting, it's very hard to see unless something really brings to fore who that person really is. Yeah. And so that's, a, that's something, I, I mean, I've also spent a lot of time in nature. Yes. In the water, in the forest. You know, the, the, this is also becoming extremely critical for me. Yeah. Um, I live, I, I mean, I'm my house, in my home, I'm surrounded by plants. 
-hmm. outside I can see trees, you know, flowers blooming, even though I live in Harlem, but looking outside, being able to see greenery does mean a lot to me. Mm -hmm. And when I am not in Harlem, most often I am in places that are rich with natural beauty and resources. Mm -hmm. And I hike, I'm really into hiking. I've been into hiking for a, a while now. I got into hiking years ago when I lived in North Carolina mm -hmm. because it's so abundantly green and yeah. there's so much attention to being, you know, having walking trails around. And so I do that, I do that. Nice. Um, I have a pretty consistent prayer practice mm -hmm. and that prayer practice very much expand is, is expansive. It, it spans the scope from, you know, praying like my great grandmother taught us to pray to coming up with my own prayers and then yeah. and dancing my prayers and mm. writing my prayers and using my cooking practice as a prayer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but all of these things because here's the thing, and I, again, I'm really in a reflective mode about what we just did because the keeping was such a long ceremony in terms mm -hmm. of the, the three years it took to make it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I found myself getting really clear um, through the process of having conversations with people. Mm -hmm. Not really interviews, but like just going and sitting on people's porches, going to where their people are from. Yeah. And that's a, that's a really important ritual. When someone takes you to where they are from, mm -hmm. and it's like showing you the most intimate aspects of how they became who they are. I take that so seriously. I've been on people's ranches. Mm -hmm. I've been in, you know, dem half demolished homes mm -hmm. from old homesteads. You know, I've sat on people's porches. I've done long walks, you know, on, on the uh, next to rivers with people learning about their family's histories mm -hmm. and it's really really powerful to you yes. i mean i would say yes. a number a couple a number of years ago i would go to all of the i probably will answer this question by going mm -hmm. to all of the prefabricated rituals yep mm -hmm. you know, doing the kind of work that i do people kind of expect that i'm gonna sometimes people expect that i'm gonna go you know to some place and talk about ritual that I used no. to, I used to be really, really into. And now as I get more, as I mature my practice and I can hear mm -hmm. myself more, it really is about the ritual of the everyday. Yes. And more of that makes me more available to myself as we were talking about with the last, you know, in our last question, yeah. being more available to myself makes me more available and just being more human mm -hmm. makes me more available to hearing what I need to hear. And and my my preferred writing modality is poetry, even though I create theater pieces, but they're poems that kind of just get extrapolated and explicated and longer and longer and longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But to be a poet is to be a, a very deep, incisive listener. Um, you have, like, I have to, I have grown my practice in such a way that I can see the things that I hear yes. and taste the things that I feel mm -hmm. and walk on a ground and, and, you know, sense the presence Yes. of stories that need to be told mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from the land, from the water, from the air. Yeah. And you know, this is really like, it sounds mystical, but it it, no. it really isn't. This is how people mm. know when to grow food and this is, you know, plant yeah. things. And it is a very ancient technique of, yeah. Of being connected to the surrounding world. Yeah. Yeah. And your surroundings. Yeah. And that is, it's like, you know, poet as farmer. Yeah. Poet as archivist. Mm -hmm. You know, poet as, you know, diviner. Yeah. A poet. Like as yeah yeah as poet as astrologer is all as a, of it yes absolutely, absolutely but you know you have to be in a certain place to be able 
Listen. To see the stars. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And so yes. that is that is what I'm talking about. Yes. And oh man, I, literally last week I was at a residency with one of my dear artist friends and we were staring up at the stars at night and we both looked at each other and went, if this is not what life is about, I don't know what, what it is about anymore. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that everything that you have said is just spot on. It's, it ain't nothing special. <laughs> it is what it is. And, and it, it is, and it is. It's yeah. Though, yes. but, and it's available to those, to most of us. Yeah. They will ask me questions about, well, now how did you get to this stretch of words that don't seem to make any sense together? Mm -hmm. And I would say, oh, I remember what I was doing or where I was, but I don't, I can't tell you how to comprehend it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to make a journey. You have to go on a journey with these colors and sounds and shapes and scents yeah. and whatever else and get there on your own accord. Yeah. And that's hopefully it makes sense as, as much sense to you as it makes to me. To me, yep, 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 yep. And to that, for me, you've hit in the core of art. It's like the core of art is to get that story across by any means necessary. And you, I feel like activate all of the senses to do that. And what people, like connections they make, whatever right there, that's, that's, their, that's their journey. But, well, I would say well, to you, I don't yeah. know if, if by any means necessary. Okay, all right. Like, I'm, I'm in a very, I'm in an analytical and critical um, relationship with my practice right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it is because increasingly I have more and more people involved. Yep. So that I was sharing with one of my colleagues that I think I'm going to cut the cast for the piece that I'm working on now, next, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, because it is so, it's like every one of the people that are under the umbrella of the work become in a lot of ways under my care. Yeah. And the bigger, like if you take a look at, if you take a look at my Instagram T, you'll see a picture of how many people, and that's not even all the people because the nope. TTO folks weren't there, you know, when we took this picture, and you know, and y'all have been rolling deep <laughs> the last week or so. And it's like, yep. you know, it's like, yep. I don't want to care for, I don't, I don't, I don't want to always have to care yes. for that many people yep. in order to tell a story. And so not by any means necessary, but by the exact means necessary. Yep. By the Ooh. most appropriate divine means necessary by the most critical and analytical and spiritual means necessary yes. by the means that invite more integrity rigor depth and creative expansiveness yes. those means, not by any means because by mm -hmm. any means we get harm that's true yes I work with artists all the time that have been harmed by the any means yep Yep, yep. And I just am not interested in, in co-signing that bullshit. So uh -huh. Uh -huh. it is it is critical that the so back to ritual, right? Like yeah. the ritual the ritual of the everyday informs how mm -hmm. I can actually show up. Yep. I say all the time that making art it it, it really really harmonizes my ego when I'm very quiet and um, I think about the kind of community I want to be a part of mm -hmm. and what part I can do in service of that. I think about what my teachers teach me and what my healers do for me, mm -hmm. what my elders do for me. And ultimately, I want them to be proud of me. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And one thing that is is for certain is that if I am out of alignment, I am surrounded by people who will tell me. And so, mm -hmm. my role is to also help to keep some balance in the space for other people who are journeying along with me. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, I'm gonna move on to the next question and thank you so much for like, I, I, I'm loving this conversation. I wish <laughs> for a very long time. Um, 
the last question that we have, or second to last, because I do want to know what you're doing next after this conversation. But the last question I'll ask is um, theatrical ceremony, right? It comes a lot up when describing your work. What does theatrical ceremony mean to you? And as you see it relating to your work? I think I have a bone to pick with theater. Mm. I think I have for a long time. Um, I think the many of the infrastructures that are created for art to be made are oppressive mm -hmm. and full of phobia and trauma and triggers and um, things that make us sick. And it's just mirroring what, what other parts of the society offer, like 12 hour days and people, you know, not really understanding all of the business dynamics, artists not getting paid on time, even if they're not, you know, it's one thing to not get paid enough and know you're not getting paid enough. It's another mm -hmm. thing to not get paid enough and not get paid on time. Yep. Um, and so on and so forth. And so the ceremonial aspect for me really comes from my work and my listening to my elders who have been doing this type of work much longer than I have and ancestors as well who find the usefulness in the space of a quote unquote theater, mm -hmm. you know, the space of a theater um, building, but the space of a theater building to do what is needed mm -hmm. for the healing of the people and the education and the edification and the upliftment of the people. And I mean, I can really go on and on about who these people are, but I'll, I'll say, you know, in this realm, Sharon Bridgeforth yeah. and Dr. Omi Oshun, Joni L. Jones, Daniel Alexander Jones, I'll say ancestors like Ntozaki Shange, mm -hmm. Dr. Barbara Ann Tier, and I could go on, mm -hmm. who have taught me, who continue to teach me about how to alchemize space, mm. how to be a technologist of mm -hmm. spirit mm -hmm. in a way that allows people to be more of themselves. I believe that theatrical ceremony is a cosmology that expands beyond the telling of stories and the making of theater. And that cosmology welcomes us all in as we are. There's protocol, there's a way of doing things, but if you come into a space to help devise or develop or perform a ceremony, mm -hmm. then that's a different, you know, that requires a different level of rigor, I believe. Mm -hmm. A ceremony is made up for me of rituals. There mm -hmm. is an order. There is a way you start. There's a way you prepare before you start. There is a flow. If we think about whatever ceremonies happen from secular to sacred, there is a way you begin. There's a preparation before you get there to yeah. begin. There's a flow. There's a way you end. And there's an expectation of what you do after you end. Mm -hmm. And that is, for me, you know, where I am as a ceremonialist, as a theatrical mm -hmm. ceremonialist. It is also the rituals are like recipes. Mm -hmm. So you put this particular technology or ritual or recipe here, and it is supposed to time capsule release into something that leads to the next thing that needs leads to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And those kind of moments and those kind of mm -hmm. opportunities are not about the show, mm -hmm. right? And so we have we we have a saying that my colleagues have been using all the time, like for a long time, this is not a show. Yeah. This is a showing. And what are we showing? The residue, the resonance of a ceremony that we've been in. You're getting mm -hmm. a little, a little tiny morsel of what we have been exploring for months or years or decades even. We keep coming back to the same ceremony, just like some people keep coming back to masjid or to temple or to church. Mm -hmm. Or to the dance hall. Yep. Yeah. Or to the beach. Mm. You know, keep coming back to the same things, themes, concepts, and ideas because they are the kind of structures that govern 
their sense and sensibilities, their lives, their, you know, and that's me too. I think mm -hmm. the, the long, the long haul theatrical ceremony that I am in is one that is about freedom. Yep. All of my pieces are about that in some way. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything else to really make work or talk about. It's now increasingly about freedom mm -hmm. as it relates to land and spirit Mm -hmm. and metaphysics in that way but yeah. it's all been the same i've been i'm asking the same questions i do not have another thing to talk about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and so the ser so every time i'm in the making of a thing every time i'm in the making of a thing i am asking the same set of questions and using different or similar rituals to hydrate and activate that ceremony Mm -hmm. or ceremony to work also in my training and, and in my teaching, mm -hmm. I share that you have to know where you want people to go. Ceremony doesn't happen haphazardly, mm -mm. right? Mm -hmm. There are particular rituals that have to be attuned in order to get to certain outcomes and in impacts mm -hmm. and certain transformations of spirit and hearts and minds and bodies and sensibilities. And that is where it gets really dangerous. Yeah. Very intimate because you're asking people to do some kind of mapping inside of their bodies mm -hmm. that absolutely are supposed to map other people's insides. Yep. Yeah. What a manipulation that is. It's manipulative, right? It's yeah. liter literally manipulative. Mm -hmm. But that a ceremony is, it is a shifting. It is a transformation. It yeah. is a jarring, you know, and it can be beautiful and it can be sweet. The ceremony isn't complete until all rituals are done in right order and fashion. Yeah. And then we have the opportunity to let, let people <laughs> move on with their evenings or days. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I get that. Um, and I loved hearing about that. So thank you for sharing, because I think that that is a very, again, this word, it seems to be coming back to me the more we talk, which is presence over and over again, right? Um, and presence demands a lot of us, I feel like, you know what I mean? So understanding how we get there is important. Um, Indeed. But to wrap this up, because the people at home want to know where to find you next. <laughs> Ebony, what's next for you? What's for the future? <laughs> well, there are a number of things on the horizon. Um, and the best way to keep up with what's going on with me is Instagram. Jupiter okay. Performance Studio has an Instagram page, and that is my performance hub for the study of Black diasporic performance traditions. Mm. And then my personal Instagram, that's really where I live online. I have a website, bettysdaughterarts.com and Jupiter has a website as well. You can find all of that stuff on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And there, the, well, I'm in the midst of like the y yesterday's show, yesterday's showing ceremony, mm -hmm. um, opened up Jupiter Performance Studio second season. Um, and my 15th year of making work in New York City. And I don't know exactly why that, I just said that for the first time. No. And it feels very auspicious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Deep, down, um, both of them. But mm -hmm. Jupiter, you know, is a new thing. It's a baby, it's a baby institution hub. Um, a lot of people have moved through in the last year and a half, you mm -hmm. know, and a lot of people are slated to move through in, in this year. So what's going on? Mm -hmm. I go back into development for a piece that I started working on maybe about five years ago called In the Name of the Mother Tree. It takes the work, um, the writings, the teachings, um, some of the writings and teachings of Dr. Alexis Pauline Gums mm -hmm. and stages them as a theatrical ceremony that happens mm -hmm. on land and in water, looking at womanist revivalist principles of, of climate mm. reparations. Yeah. Um, and um, Alexis is one of my very close friends. She wrote a book called M Archive After the End of the World. She wrote another mm. book called Dub Finding Ceremony, among mm. many other books and writings. Yeah. But those two works are, are staying with me in a very specific way. Mm. Um, and 
I am, I'm, I'm studying those works, yeah. reading those works. And we've done a lot of development for that piece. Um, and that piece has a world premiere at the Apollo um, under their new works program spring mm -hmm. of next year. Yes. So we'll be developing it. And the way that, the way that I have been developing work, as I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. is by listening. And so the piece, like in the name of the mother tree, really um, centers a Southern sensibility around climate reparations and mm -hmm. womanist survivalist practices. And so I will be on a listening tour with my ensemble. Some people, in the ensemble we'll be going to places down south and rural areas in the in uh, new england mm -hmm. in the midwest to listen and to share and gather stories about you know about land revival yeah. land revival and so that is all summer yes we are be, we'll be showing a clip of work um um a short snippet of work at an environmental justice convening that i am um, cre co collaborating on with Double Edge Theater mm -hmm. in Asheville, Massachusetts. And there'll be tickets available to come to that convening. It's the Art and Survival Festival that'll mm -hmm. be happening September 8th through the 11th. Um, and so at, at Double Edge, mm -hmm. I also have a course, a uh, community course called Black Water. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of these same themes and places them in a, in a course, in a slow course, um, environment virtual, and we'll be doing an in-person um, wow. Blackwater course this summer. Where we'll be also visiting sites and doing water work and water ceremony um, here. In, actually, it, this is, will be happening in New York City, mm -hmm. but we also will be going to uh, places beyond the state. There is a lot more. Yes, I think you know. Those are the, the highlight. Is this? This in the name of the mother tree that I'll share now. The highlight, um, the highlights of what I've already shared. But really, I'm most excited, T, about mm -hmm. the listening. Yes. Like it was, I was doing all of this listening at the top of the year, and then I had to stop to get ready to go to rehearsal, go, yeah. go into rehearsal, the keeping. <laughs> and I felt like I was just getting started, and people yeah. started to, you know, call me and reach out and say, "Hey, will you come to our farm?" Will you come to our, you know, garden? Yes. Can you come to this bird sanctuary and do do some bird watching? Like all of this stuff. And I was like, I'll be right back with y'all. Yep. I'll be right back with y'all. Yep. So I'm so ready to get out of the city and into the woods. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and into the water. So, yes. yes. Out of the city into the woods and water. That's that's if I could frame this conversation in in a few words, that's what this conversation embodies for me. Um, well, thank you for sharing um, all the links and all the IGs that Ebony just told you to go for. Look no further than our chat function because we're dropping it all right there. Go follow this amazing person, please. Um, their work is great. Um, and as a person who I literally inspires me. Um, so thank you again for sitting down with me and taking the time. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in the future. Um, bye, everybody at home. <laughs> bye. Take care. <laughs>